Hello everyone, I'm Andrew Chu Osborne and I'm a martial artist. In March 2011, just over an hour into my shift as a security guard while I was attacked at work by a man who had a personal vendetta against my family. The attack left me with debilitating PTSD and changed my life forever. This is my account of the attack. Just to give everyone a bit of background to my family life. I was born to a Jamaican father and a white mother in an industrial town in Midlands of England called Wolverhampton. I was one of ten children. We thought nothing unusual about coming from such a large family during the time. We were just a regular family. The house was full of love and we all had enough food and looked after each other. Like most children who grew up in the 1970s, I was inspired by the Kung Fu craze that swept across the Western world following the release of Bruce Lee's Enter the Dragon. Um, in fact, the first time I saw Bruce Lee, believe it or not, was on a kids' TV program popular at the time called Teaser. I got get enough of martial arts or Kung Fu cinema. I first took up boxing, then studied Wada, Re Karate with Sensei Joshua Johnson, MBA, the first black martial arts instructors in the UK. I then studied Hungar and Latli Mian Kwan Pei. Those were tough years, but very educational. A lot of things we did and the conditions we practiced in, you couldn't get away with today. But at the time, that's all we had. You just did it and grew from the experience. Gained an understanding and respect for other people and other martial artists. No. The hard work did pay off, and a lot of the grounding I had was forged during those early years. In the late 1980s and into the early 1990s, I started to develop my own form for Tai Chi Kun. This earned me the Chief Monica addition to my name. Hence, everyone now knows me as Andrew Chielsborn. It's my style. You can call it the extension of my soul. It does change depending on how I'm feeling and what mood I'm in. Once again, referencing the little dragon Bruce Lee with his old adage, take what is useful and reject what is useless. That's what I did with my Tai Chi Kun style. It references the hard and soft styles development from the Shaolin Temple and all the different family lineages thereafter. It is a bit of a mixture of many styles, kind of like chop suey to use a cooking analogy. A bit of this from here, a bit of this from there to create the perfect dish. Fast forward to March 2011. I've been in the security and surveillance industry for around 20 years. At the time, I was working for a supermarket chain in Wolverhampton. I was about an hour into my shift and I was patrolling the alcohol section, making sure that nothing was out of the ordinary. When I was made aware by a member of staff that there was a homeless person bothering customers outside, I went out to intervene and make sure that the homeless person was escorted away from the premises. Suddenly, from the corner of my eye, I saw a man dressed with a builder's utility belt full of kitchen knives, carrying a modified hockey stick, which had a sharpened metal blade on the end. He was also carrying a homemade shield made out of a trash can. He said, Andrew Osborne, Ivy comes to kill you and the rest of all your family. And then all of a sudden he just went for it and lunged towards me. Bear in mind I had no radio, so I couldn't call for help to any of the admin staff or management. So I was being attacked on my own. I shouted at the top of my voice to the duty girls who were working on the tills to call the police for help and to keep the customers of the store well back from where I was. One of the girls who worked on the tills managed to contact the police. Meanwhile, I was outside and had managed to shield myself from the attacker between a parked car. The look on the guy's face will haunt me for the rest of my life. It was like a rabid dog, completely out of his mind. This guy was well over six foot tall. I was thinking, you know, I've got to get help. I've got to get help. And trying, he tried to cut me off, you know, still swinging the hockey blade stick after me. And I started to run. I had no option but to enter the store and try and activate the security shutters. Unfortunately, he started to chase me into the store. And so my adrenaline started to really kick in. All I could think about was keeping everyone safe and try and lure him towards a place where I could disarm him and keep him restrained until whatever help came. The duty manager came out of his office, um, saw what was going on and and quickly ran back into his office and locked it. I shouted, call the police, call the police. Um, so I was now towards the back end of the store waiting for him to follow. Luckily, there wasn't many customers in the vicinity. I could only shudder to think what this guy would have done if anyone had been in between us. So I had to use my wits. And that's where martial arts training instinctively came into action. I'm not talking Steven Seagal movie type stuff. Um, this was proper defensive combat. I hit him with all I had to do. And he's like Bruce Lee again, where he says, when the opponent expands, I contract. When he contracts, I expand. And when there is an opportunity, I do not hit. 
It hit so by itself. It was all over in a matter of seconds. It felt so unreal. I was now ironically enough in the in the pharmacy section. My good friend Rodney Bruce, who was a worker for that section, had just logged on to start his shifts. So he saw what was going on and ran over towards me. I now had the attacker pinned to the ground. Rodney also helped keep the guy pinned to the ground. The duty manager had also emerged, but in the tussle had gotten a bit too close to one of the blades and got a slight laceration on his right side to manage to get the attacker's builder's utility belt and all the blades away from him. But he was like the Terminator, like the ever-ready bunny on crack. He just kept on going. The mad dog stare on his face. All he wanted to do was kill. We used all our strength to keep him pinned to the ground. I think I must have started to go into shock, but I kept him down with all my essence, all my determination, every last ounce of strength I had. My family would not be hurt. Suddenly I felt a hand on my shoulder. It was that of a police officer. He said, come on, Andrew, we'll take over now, come on. Four tactical police officers were now surrounding us. They subdued the attacker. All this time the guy was threatening, did he always swearing and cursing. I properly went into shock. The enormity hit me hard. The police carted him away to a special psychiatric unit. It turned out that the attacker had been to the same school that my younger brother had attended and taken umbrage with the fact that our parents had been mixed race. Anonymous, that's all I can describe how I felt in the days, weeks, months, and in the years that followed, like someone had taken who I was and sucked all the emotion and positivity out of me. The nightmares I had were relentless reliving the situation over and over again. Why did this happen? Why our found family? What would have happened if he had gone to my family first instead of me? That's all I thought about 24-7. I had no joy in my life anymore. Medication needed help. Therapy didn't help. I was a prisoner to fear. But now this comes to me going, how to conquer this and get through this. Because I'm not only affects myself, I'm not looking. To try and keep peace. But unfortunately, push comes to shove, you will have to utilize what you've learned, but still in a self defensive way, not in an aggressive way. So I'll try and keep myself passive in that sense, but it's there if it's needed, I will use it to defend myself in life and death. And I have. You know, right. so that's what true martial arts is all about. Forget about the ego, because, you know, ego is a man made thing, which destroys a lot of things in life, you know. And told me long ago there's a calm before the storm but I know it's been coming for some time when it's over so they say it'll rain a sunny day but I know shining down like water Cold and brain is hard, but I know.